Recently, this exoplanet has caught the attention of scientists due to strange light emissions that challenge everything we know about the cosmos. Could this be proof of alien technology? With its Earth-like qualities, Proxima b is emerging as one of the most exciting possibilities in the search for life beyond our planet. Is there another planet that's very close to Earth, kind of like us, where there could be a civilization? Yeah, the closest star system to us, Proxima Centauri, actually has a fairly Earth-like planet around it. We don't know quite how Earth-like it is. It's called Proxima b, Earth's distant cousin with a twist. Proxima b is a planet that's pretty close to Earth in size. That alone makes scientists sit up and pay attention. When a planet is about the same size as Earth, people start to wonder if it could also have Earth-like conditions. Maybe, but not so fast. Proxima b doesn't orbit a star like our Sun, Instead, it circles a red dwarf star called Proxima Centauri. This star is smaller, cooler, and gives off far less light than the Sun. That's important because the kind of star a planet orbits affects its weather, temperature, and whether it might support life. Now, here's the exciting part. Proxima b sits in what's called the habitable zone. That's the not-too-hot, not-too-cold area around a star where liquid water could exist. And let's be real, if you're looking for life, water is usually step one. But don't pack your bags just yet. Proxima b comes with some serious challenges. First off, it's probably tidally locked. This means one side of the planet always faces the star, and the other side is stuck in eternal night. Imagine living on a planet where one half is burning hot all the time, and the other is frozen solid. Not exactly cozy. And if that wasn't enough, Proxima Centauri, is a bit of a drama queen. It shoots out powerful solar flares, huge blasts of energy that can slam into Proxima b. These flares might strip away the planet's atmosphere or make life on the surface pretty dangerous with all that radiation. Still, despite all that, scientists are very interested in Proxima b. Why? Because it's one of the closest Earth-sized planets we've found, and it might just have some liquid water. That makes it one of the best places to look for life beyond our solar system. Red dwarf stars don't sound all that exciting at first. They don't glow brightly, they're not massive like some of those giant stars in space documentaries, and they definitely won't win any most dramatic awards in the universe. But don't let that fool you. Red dwarfs are actually kind of a big deal. First off, they're the most common type of star in our galaxy. So if you just picked a random spot in space, chances are there's a red dwarf nearby. These stars are small, dim, and burn their fuel very slowly. That slow burn means they can keep shining for billions and even trillions of years. That's important, because if a planet is orbiting one, it has a long time to just be there, which is good if you're hoping life might develop, because red dwarves are cooler than our sun. Their habitable zone, the area where liquid water could exist, is much closer in. That's where planets like Proxima b come into the picture. Proxima b orbits Proxima Centauri, which is a red dwarf. And lucky for us, it's sitting right inside that habitable zone. So even though the star is dim, it could still be warm enough for water. And where there's water, there might be life. Now let's talk about Proxima Centauri itself. It doesn't shine brightly. It only gives off about 0.05% of the visible light our sun gives. That's barely anything. But because Proxima b is really close to it, the planet still gets about 70% of the infrared energy that Earth gets from the sun. So even if you couldn't sunbathe there, the planet might still be warm enough to matter. However, there's a twist. Proxima Centauri is known as a flare star. That means it has a temper. It can suddenly brighten up to 100 times more than usual, blasting nearby space with intense radiation. Those sudden flare-ups could be harmful to anything trying to live on Proxima b. All that radiation might mess with the planet's atmosphere, making things less friendly for life. Back in 2020, scientists from the Breakthrough Listen project picked up a strange radio signal coming from the direction of Proxima Centauri, the closest star system to Earth. The signal, called BLC-1, got everyone buzzing. It wasn't random static. It had a narrow bandwidth and a drifting frequency, the kind of stuff you'd expect from a deliberate transmission. Naturally, people began wondering, could this be aliens? But then, just as quickly as the excitement started, the experts said, nah, it's not aliens. It's probably just radio interference from Earth. And just like that, the story died down. But here's the thing.
Pat explanation doesn't totally make sense. First off, the signal came from a very specific point in the sky, right where Proxima Centauri is. Most radio interference from Earth shows up all over the place, or repeats in different parts of the sky. But this one was focused. And it didn't pop up again during follow-up observations. That's weird. If it were truly just human-made interference, why did it seem so directed? And why did it only show up once? Also, the signal didn't match any known satellite or Earth-based source. The frequency drift, how the signal slowly changed over time, is something you'd expect from a transmitter on a rotating or moving planet, like a planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. That detail got swept under the rug a bit too quickly. The official explanation is that BLC-1 was caused by some sort of human-made device, maybe a phone tower, maybe something else. But they still haven't identified exactly what. So we're just supposed to accept that this rare, focused, once-in-a-lifetime signal was a fluke. Even some scientists admit the whole situation was a learning moment for the organization conducting the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. They say it helped refine their process. Fair enough. But brushing off the possibility of aliens just because we think it's interference? That seems a little too easy. Imagine waking up to the news that scientists have finally detected alien life or advanced technology on Proxima B. The headlines would explode. It wouldn't just be about finding something interesting on another planet. It would change how we see ourselves in the universe. It would confirm that life can exist in environments very different from Earth's, which means Earth isn't so special after all. That alone is mind-blowing. But it gets deeper. If we also found signs of alien technology, it could shake up everything we know about science, engineering, and even human progress. Think about it. If another civilization developed completely different technologies, we might be able to learn from them, borrow from them, or even use their discoveries to fast-track our own advancements. It's a wild possibility, but right now we're still at the beginning of the journey. The only way to get answers is to keep exploring. Scientists are pushing boundaries every day, using powerful telescopes to study Proxima B from afar. And what they've found so far only adds more layers to the mystery. One of the most fascinating things about Proxima B is how it's tidally locked, meaning one side always faces its sun while the other side is stuck in permanent darkness. That creates insane temperature differences. One half is constantly baked in sunlight while the other is frozen in eternal night. Life in those extremes sounds impossible, right? Maybe not. There's a narrow strip between the two sides called the twilight zone, and this might just be the sweet spot. Temperatures here could be stable enough for liquid water to exist, and if there's water, there's a chance for life. On top of that, strange signals from the planet's dark side have made scientists wonder, are they coming from something or someone? Are we hearing the whispers of another civilization across space? Proxima b orbits a red dwarf star named Proxima Centauri which sits over four light years away from us. That's about 25 trillion miles. To give you an idea, even the fastest spacecraft humans have ever built would take tens of thousands of years to get there. So right now all we can do is study it from afar. One major problem is our tools. Regular telescopes can't clearly see planets that are far away, especially when the planets are right next to a bright star. Imagine trying to spot a tiny firefly next to a huge spotlight. That's what it's like trying to spot Proxima b. That's why newer and more advanced tools are such a big deal. Take the James Webb Space Telescope. It can detect infrared light, which helps us peek at distant planets and maybe even figure out what's in their atmospheres. Then there's Harmony, an advanced tool being built for the extremely large telescope. This telescope, set to open in 2028 in Chile, will be the biggest of its kind, with a mirror almost 40 meters wide. That size means it can collect way more light and produce super sharp images. Scientists hope the ELT will do something groundbreaking, look at the light reflected off Proxima b and find signs of life. By checking that light from molecules like oxygen, carbon dioxide, or water vapor, it could tell us if something is living there. A 2025 study even suggests the ELT might be able to tell the difference between living and lifeless planets in just 10 hours of observation. That's a massive leap. Proxima b remains one of our best chances at finding life beyond Earth. The new technology is finally giving us the power to study it like never before. 
if Proxima B does have an atmosphere, and especially, actually, if that atmosphere has signs of life, the ELT might be the telescope that spots it, and if that happens, the question, are we alone, might finally get an answer. Let me know if you want the rest continued from Can We Really Get There onward.